Since 2020, I've been trying to make a lot of changes in my life. I've pushed myself out of my comfort zone to try new experiences, form better habits, and learn about the world to become a better person. I've become politically and socially aware, learning about and pushing back against injustice. I started regularly exercising at 30 years old, and I've continued that habit until the present. I've delved into new hobbies like home coffee brewing and enthusiast mechanical keyboards. I started a YouTube channel covering said keyboard and worked my way up to partner status and over 3,000 subscribers. Next on my self-improvement list is an overall overhaul of my fashion. Hopefully this will include not just clothes but also accessories and maybe even hairstyle. For this video, the sole focus will be on accessories. Wristwatch, bag, wallet, coin purse. First, I want to show you the accessories that I've since replaced. This Converse sling slash messenger bag was my everyday bag for a long time. It eventually wore out over several years of use. To replace it, I wanted a bigger but still small bag. I opted for this Nike backpack, which is actually categorized as a kid's bag, but I don't think it looks like a kid's bag. What do you think? I chose this because it's still quite small, but is big enough for a big Nintendo Switch case. You can even expand or contract the space with this zipper mechanism. Next, here's my wristwatch. When I like something a lot, I can keep it for years and years. This watch is the prime example of that. I'm not sure of the exact year, but I'm pretty sure I've had this watch since I was in high school. So somewhere between 2002 and 2006, 16 to 20 years ago, and it really looks its age. A ton of paint has chipped and scratched off around the face. A bit of the glass has chipped on this part showing the date. And I have of course replaced the strap and battery multiple times. Next, my coin purse. This one was actually made for me by my partner and it's really nice and I love it but I specifically asked for it to be deep in order to store a lot of coins. I later learned that this was a poor decision on my part as that depth made it hard to dig through and find the coins that I needed. Before this, I actually used souvenir coin purses shaped like fish from Philippine beach destinations like Boracay or Palawan. And finally, here's my wallet. This is a long wallet from Pen Shop. This rope thing is made of paracord and I actually made it myself to replace my old wallet chains. I've mainly bought these cheap long wallets with the wallet chain holes for pretty much my entire adult life. Every time one would break or wear out, I would just buy a new one in the same style. This is an example of my strange sense of function over form. I put all my cards along the top half of the wallet because I put it in my back pocket and this way the cards avoid getting sat on. I have the chain or rope because I also like to remove the wallet from my back pocket sometimes when I sit. I'll set the wallet down on my lap and the chain or rope makes sure that even if I forget that it's there, I won't end up dropping or leaving it behind. I know it's weird but it worked for me. I knew I wanted to update these accessories but I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to upgrade to. I knew I wanted a smaller bag even smaller than my old Converse messenger bag, where I would keep just my essentials, like my vaccination card, coin purse, maybe some hand sanitizer, a smaller wallet, and that's it. And speaking of that smaller wallet, I knew I wanted to ditch the long wallet and the rope or chain. I wanted something I could keep in my smaller bag or in my front pocket. Right around this time, my partner went to Spain for a work trip. Apparently, Spain has a lot of nice leather products, and so she offered to find me some accessories. She was able to find a bag, coin purse, and watch that matched what I wanted. I also wanted a wallet but nothing she found really matched exactly what I wanted. This is when I started really going deep into researching so I had some very specific requirements that were hard to shop for without having me there. This is something that I always do when I need to buy something, obsessively research. I looked at so many wallets and learned so much about leather, like the fact that the term genuine leather can be misleading. It's often used when the leather product is low quality but still technically leather. When you've got a better quality leather, it's often referred to with a more specific kind of language like top grain or full grain. If you want more information on this, Rose Anvil has some great videos on the topic which I will link in the description. 
I knew I wanted a small wallet, but I didn't want a dad wallet. And I knew that I couldn't live with something too minimal like just a card holder. I actually don't really have that many cards. Here in the Philippines, cash and coins are still widely used, although the pandemic has accelerated the adoption of cashless and contactless payment transactions. Before we go any deeper into the wallets, and believe me, we will go deep. First, let's look at the bag, coin purse, and watch that my partner got for me from Spain. Since I wasn't there, I'm not privy to a lot of the details on these products. There was also a language barrier, so my partner wasn't able to get all that much information from the sellers. It seems like they don't really make the distinction between genuine and top or full grain leather over there. They just say it's real leather and whether it came from Spain or Italy. So I don't really know what kind of leather these are made of, but I really can't discern leather quality anyway. Time will tell, I guess. Here's the coin purse. I love the look of it. It's nice and shallow for easy coin access unlike my old one. On the front, you've got a slot for some cards and this little snap fastener to lock it up. On the back, there's a zippered compartment and inside there's even a keychain. Very nice. The bag is nice and small with a main compartment accessible via zipper that you can lock and place once closed with a snap fastener. On the back, there's a zippered compartment and on the inside, there's another one too. I love the look of this bag. The size is perfect for just the essentials and I love that I can wear and carry it around a few different ways. The watch is from a brand called Glunt or Glunt. I don't know. You've got a dark wooden face with gold hands and a gold frame. Very minimalistic and beautiful. My partner got two quick release straps, one in black and the other in brown. The black one isn't super dark black and seems to have a bit of a bluish tint. Both straps also don't feel like very sturdy leather. I even had some material tear off while replacing straps. We'll see how well they hold up. And finally, the moment I've been waiting for, the wallet. I wanted a bifold with a cash pocket. I wanted it to have a minimalist look. Not too many visible card slots, no extraneous things like zippers or pockets with snaps or extra flaps. I also didn't want something super plain like a dad wallet. I got really enamored with wallets where you had the cards positioned vertically as opposed to horizontally like in a dad wallet. I found a lot of these including the Bellroy Note Sleeve, Aurox Wave, Pioneer Altitude, and Distill Union Wally Agent. The problem with wallets like these however is that since the cards are oriented vertically, it makes the overall width of the cash pocket smaller than you would get on a wallet with horizontal cards. And unfortunately for me, Philippine peso bills are quite wide at 16 centimeters. Most of these wallets are made to handle at most US dollars, which are half a centimeter less wide than Philippine pesos. This meant that there was a risk that I wouldn't be able to fit bills in without folding them. And with the recent brouhaha here in the Philippines about new polymer notes that shouldn't be folded, I really wanted a wallet where bills would fit comfortably without folding. I did also consider some horizontal card wallets. With these, I wanted something that at least had some kind of unique design flourish to distinguish it from a boring dad wallet. Maybe a pop of color or some unique angles on its card pockets. Unfortunately, most of the wallets I was able to research aren't available locally. So I would have had to order internationally and pay big delivery fees and or endure super long wait times. I looked through local online retailer Zalora's offerings and found some locally available options. They have Belleroy here, but the note sleeve is super expensive at 5,190 Philippine pesos. I found a cheaper note sleeve style wallet from a brand called Maverick & Co, but a review mentioned that Philippine bills don't fit. With all of this obsessive research, I started getting targeted with wallet ads on Facebook and Instagram. One of these led me to a local brand called Cullen Wayne who offers a bifold wallet with vertical card slots at just under 2,800 pesos. Unfortunately, it was out of stock and also it looks like an exact clone of the Bellroy note sleeve. Like not even inspired by it, just straight up an exact copy. Same look, same features, same dimensions. And amazingly, it seems like it has some advantages over the more expensive Bellroy. First, there are product photos of it with PH bills inserted. So it seems like I'd have no problem with bill fit. And second, it's supposedly made with full grain leather. Bellroy doesn't specify whether their leather is full grain or top grain on any specific product because they use one or the other depending on what's appropriate on specific parts of their products. I suspect that Bellroy's wallets are mostly top grain since they're able to remain pretty thin despite the myriad features they stuff in them. So this Cullen Wayne bifold just seems too good to be true. And it has since come back in stock with a higher price of just under 3,000 pesos. But back when it was out of stock, I saw one of these 
purchase notifications for it, which is just super sketchy. Another option I found was the Drake wallet from local leather artisan, the Tannery Manila. This one also has vertical card slots and a cash pocket, and I could actually go to their physical store to verify that bills would fit. Unfortunately, I wasn't too fond of how it looked. It didn't have any unique design flourishes and had a lot of visible card slots, which I didn't like. At this point, I didn't quite know what to do. The Bellroy note sleeve was at the top of my list, but it was just so expensive. And I found a local review saying that P H bills didn't fit. Later on, I found a video with someone putting PH bills in a note sleeve, but the angle was really bad so I couldn't really see it clearly. Aside from Zalora, Belroy is also locally sold by Urban Traveler & Co, who has physical stores, so I could check for myself whether bills fit or not. I eventually decided to go to the Tannery Manila first to see how I liked the Drake wallet in person, and boy am I glad that I decided that. Once I saw it and held it in my hands, I fell in love. It looked so much better in person than in their terrible product photos. I bought it for 2,200 pesos, less than half what I would have paid for a Bellroy note sleeve. The Drake does have a lot of visible card slots like I mentioned, but you can cover them up. I've had no problems with fitting bills, and the wallet is small enough for my new bag as well as my front pocket. And it has a feature that I only found out about after I'd already bought it, a hidden extra cash pocket. I initially wanted something in black, but this was only available in this light brown color, but I do actually love the color. I think it looks amazing and I am very happy with my purchase. So this is hopefully just the first video in a series where I overhaul my fashion. This video you're watching right now has actually taken a very long time to make. And so I've already gone quite deep into researching fashion and even made some clothes purchases. If you've got any tips for me for this journey, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I would also love to know what you thought about this first video and maybe what you might like to see in future videos in the series. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me for the next one.